Hello, my name is Joe Brumfield, Senior Director with ASED. Our team is dedicated to partnering with you to create custom solutions for all of your professional learning needs. On behalf of your friends here at ASED, I'd like to welcome you to ASED Webbies. Our Webbies are short clips created by our faculty members to highlight strategies to help educators deliver virtual instruction. Join us every Friday to learn and share some creative ways to deliver instruction with engaging online tools. Our Webbies will be released every Friday on social media accounts as well as ASED streaming. Follow the hashtag ASED Faculty Friday to view our latest releases. Enjoy. Hello out there. My name is Donnell Gregory and I'm a member of the UBD and the FIT cadre at ASED. Primarily, I work in schools across the country to help coach, but also facilitate learning with teachers and leaders. Today, I'll be talking to you about setting up expectations in an online learning environment. I know that we all have um, been trying to make adjustments in the way that we teach and instruct students. And for some, for some of us, it's very difficult because we're not used to all the technology that we had to um, get through in order to be able to set up our classrooms. So I wanna encourage you and continue to, to tell you that it will get better. Um, the more practice that you get, the better that you'll become. So as we think about moving forward for the summer and the fall, I want you to think about setting up expectations in your classroom and what does that look like, feel like, sound like in action? So I've created some topics um, that I want you to think about when setting up your on, online learning or remote learning um, in your classroom. Setting the purpose for learning is gonna be key, particularly because students are doing work online versus in person. Um, looking at the difference of what and how you should be um, online versus in person as well as the students. So looking at the expectation, uh, expectations of teachers and of also the students. Finally, we'll look at focus. Again, showing students what the focus of the lesson is and will be throughout. And then modeling that. I think uh, for so long we take modeling for, so, uh, for granted, but that's really going to be key, particularly on online learning environment. So as you can see, I put some um, goals and enduring understanding and essential questions together for you, just because I wanted you to see like setting that goal in the very beginning is, is powerful. So for us, um, you will, you'll see how using Google Classroom, Canvas, Microsoft Teams, or Zoom, or other platforms are so important in order to even start with remote learning. Things that you uh, want you to think about. So teachers will understand that relevant goals, um, making sure you have standards or a grade level expectations are set in the very beginning of your course. Um, it re really requires some thoughtful planning and alignment with the standards in your activities. I know uh, for me, I, I feel like I'm working harder now and doing online learning than I was before when I was um, just doing face-to-face. -face. So be, be uh, cognizant also of how much work and um, that you're giving students at a given time. Remember, students are distracted by all kinds of things at home um, and around them. So we wanna make sure that we're given small chunks and then uh, come back and give them something else. Small chunks and come back and give them something else. So th that would mean that you really have to ask some questions of yourself. So what relevant goals and objectives um, will you have in this course? Um, to what extent are you prepared to teach a remote learning course or to continue teach teaching a remote learning, learning course? And finally, in what ways do you in, uh, plan to engage students in the content? What does that look like, feel like, sound like in, in, in action, particularly on an online course? So just some key points. We know that remote learning um, allows students to really to access the content 24 seven. So how are you gonna make that, uh, that content available for them? 
And then in what ways will you give them to have some face-to-face -face time with their peers? Um, again, it takes a set of, uh, a particular set of skills um, and planning in order to teach remotely. So then expectations for re uh, remote learning for both students and teachers are that one, remember that you are the expert. Um, I know students might have some advantage or some edge over us at some point uh, because of their technology skills. But when it comes to content, we have to make sure that we are setting forth a content that is uh, um, challenging, but yet easy to access. <clears throat> Uh, and then thinking about how are you going to um, assess students' performance? You know, a lot of talk around the, the uh, country is um, we're looking at how do we as assess students online? What does that look like, feel like, sound like? So thinking about setting your goals, but yet how will you assess that, um, those goals for those students and then be able to give them some feedback? Um, students must also know that this is um, <clears throat> something that they have to dedicate themselves to, and they have to really be un, uh, be aware of the rules and, and procedures that you set in terms of online learning. We want uh, students acting appropriately and making sure they understand the rules and um, um, know how to navigate through the technology. So that brings us to focus instruction. Why focus instruction? Well, I showed you earlier what that means. It means just setting the goal and purpose of learning so that everyone is clear about the learning. Um, are, how are students accessing your grade level expectations? And do they know what, uh, what you want them to know, understand, and be able to do? So setting the focus, the purpose. When students can't, um, understand the, the task or the goal, then that means their vision of what the purpose is won't be very clear. So make sure that that is um, clear in the very beginning and throughout, particularly in the end. Um, I always ask uh, students questions when I go into their classroom, I ask you, what are you learning? Why are you learning it? And how do you know you've learned it? Those three questions really help teachers focus also on planning lessons and been very clear, um, not only in the, in the beginning of the uh, lesson, but all, all in the middle and always, always at the end. I love this quote by Carolyn Thomason. She states, when a teacher lacks clarity about what a student should know, understand, and be able to do uh, as a result of a lesson, then the learning task or um, the learning task she or he has may not be engaging and we, we can almost be certain that the task will help students understand the essential ideas or the principles of what you're trying to get them to teach. So therefore, um, a fuzzy sense of essential results and fuzzy activities, which in turn results in fuzzy student understandings. Uh, I love that quote, so just be clear. Just continuing the, uh, the research, uh, Bob Marzano did a meta-analysis of 53 research, uh, research studies um, that found that when students were clear in advance about what they are learning, um, their achievement was on average 34 percentiles higher um, on, on, on those tasks and tests than those uh, who did not understand the, the, the goal of the task. Um, then once you set the, the, the goals and the objectives and you've shown that and the expectations are there, we have to focus on modeling. And again, visiting classrooms across the country, um, I see there, there's a lack of modeling. Um, and when it's time to do the task, students are somewhat unsure, if not unsure about what to do. And as a result, students are doing activities and not really addressing the skills. So, when modeling, teachers have the opportunity to talk about the purpose, showing the skills, being able to demonstrate what their expectations is of the task. Um, and when you don't do that, what happens is that students are left to uh, march at the beat of their own drum. For example, oh, let me go back.
<laughs> so you get, you get the point. Um, thinking about modeling and when modeling that requires us as the uh, teacher um, or educator to do a think aloud. Um, and I usually do a think aloud when I'm showing or modeling what this would look like if students were doing it. So you want to one, name the strategy or skill that students are going to be addressing. Uh, what is the purpose of this, of this task? Uh, again, um, what are you learning? Why are you learning it? How do you know you've learned it? Um, demonstrate by modeling what exactly you want students to do. Again, a lot of times um, students start doing activities and think the activity is what they really was learning as opposed to the skill or the concept. So I've put together here just a quick example of what that will look like uh, in a real world situation. So the standard I can solve a multi-step problem with decimals by using properties of operations to calculate numbers. Now, I'm going to attack this as a, um, a close read strategy, basically. So if I look at this, my first read is thinking about asking myself, what is the big idea? So Mr. Jackson has taken a cab in New York City. The taxi cab fare includes a base charge of $2.50, plus an additional $2.50 each, each mile uh, traveled. If Mr. Jackson, Jackson starts with a $20 bill, takes the cab for five bows and leaves a $1 tip, how much money will he uh, be left with? So I'm asking myself, what is the big idea? What is this question really asking me? So my second read, what I want to do is be able to pull out key information or highlight what those important ideas are. So as I think about this, I'm thinking, hmm, what are the big ideas? And what's important here? I see bills. I see additional um, $2.50. So those are the things that I would in, encourage you to do as you're modeling for students based off of what you want them to know, understand, and do. Not with the actual activity, but actual skill. Finally, the last read is just thinking about what is the problem um, actually asking you? And it's how much money really, really have left after he pays for his cab ride, if he pays with a $20 bill. So using context clues and text evidence helps us to do that. But then we show them how to line the problem up, use whatever skill and strategy that you have for them to be able to work with, and then they should be able to solve the problem um, based off of that. Some common mistakes when modeling, um, teachers use you or we as opposed to using I. Um, you want to make sure that it's not a procedural step-by-step -step thing versus the skill or the concept you're trying to get them to, to uh, work on. So therefore, focus on what students need to learn, not the actual uh, activity or process. Um, there's a couple other things here that I have listed. I won't read this list to you, but you have them there. Um, but the most important thing, make sure you check for alignment between the purpose, the lesson, and assessment. Throughout this uh, presentation, you've heard me say that, that it's so key, that it's so key that your standards match with your learning activities and your learning activity um, um, really helps students to be, pair, be prepared for the assessment that they're going to take at the end of your lesson or lessons. Um, I've put together some web tools uh, for you to research um, along with a tutorial. I think this is a great opportunity for you to use in your classrooms. Um, not only do I have web resources, I also gave you um, some tutorials on uh, platforms that are helpful and that could be used throughout your classroom uh, for next year. Um, this is really our time together. I thank you very much for allowing me to take some moments to explain what it looks like, feels like, and sounds like if you have online learning and remote learning. So thank you very much. And I wish you um, happy webbing. <laughs>